Papa Smurf, guess what? Oh, oh, you almost got it. I'll keep reaching for it. Welcome back to Talking Serpents. So this video is going to be strictly about how do you seal the inside of a custom reptile enclosure? And I get this question a lot because obviously I make a lot of custom reptile enclosures and I also sell a variety of do-it-yourself reptile enclosure kits. So let's just say we'll go into this enclosure. All these enclosures are made out of wood, birch wood specifically. And you have a wood finish and everything's raw at this point. Nothing has been sealed so the exterior has been sealed or the interior is just raw at this point. And um, this is how you get my DIY reptile enclosure kit so you can decide what interior seal you want. So there are a few options. I'm just gonna go over the easiest ones. So I'm going to be going about simplicity. All right, so these are the waterproof interior sealants that I personally use and recommend. So this is what I would call dry lock original. It comes in a white. Um, I have used this uh, in the past sometimes I use it. It does help with uh, waterproofing, but I wouldn't 100% recommend it because they put in some kind of like, it almost like sand, so it has like a sandpaper texture. I would say this dry lock original is equal to like 100, 150 grit sandpaper. It definitely has some granulate in there. So I wouldn't 100% recommend it. It would make cleaning definitely a little more difficult. You would definitely have to use like a, a specific brush to clean it out. Um, so the next one up is Dry Lock Extreme. This one does not have any of that granulate in there. And it also, uh, it definitely waterproofs, uh, I think about twice as much as what Dry Lock Original does. So I would definitely recommend this one since it doesn't have the granulate in there, so it'll be easier to clean. So for that extra few dollars, it is definitely worth it, because when you are actually going to be cleaning the interior of your reptile enclosure, you'll be kicking yourself that you didn't spend just a couple extra bucks, because it'll be worth it. So the next product I would recommend, the brand is called Verithane. So this is actually a water-based polyurethane. Polyurethanes are used for a top coat when you're staining wood. So it's a wood sealer. But it is absolutely important. There are water-based and there are oil-based. You want the water-based one. That way it is reptile safe. So this polyurethane is going to be, if you want to see um, like a raw wood finish. So if you like seeing the grain structure on the inside of the enclosure, you just like the look of raw wood and, and or you just want to keep it simplistic, this is definitely the option. So if you went over to one of these enclosures over here, since I said that the interior was not sealed yet, you would be able to see all the wood grain structure, except obviously it would be sealed. So dry lock comes in white and gray that come from the can. So this one's bright white, this one is just white. But I will put up a little picture right here and it will show all the different shades that you can tint this to. So if you buy it, let's say you buy it online and you can go into um, a place that does obviously things with interior and exterior paint for houses and you tell them to tint this dry lock, they can tint it to many different color codes. So if you want different colors on the inside of your enclosure, they give you options. So if you are interested in any of these three interior waterproof sealants, there will be a link down in the description of this video. Okay, so these three boxes 
I made out of birch wood. This is what I use for my custom reptile enclosures and my do-it-yourself reptile enclosure kits. So I made them these little boxes and it has a little lip on here so it will be able to hold moisture. So we'll start with this one. This one is not going to have any coating on there. This one is going to have the polyurethane that is water-based. This box is going to have Drylock Extreme. All right, I'm gonna start with the Drylock Extreme. So I will be using a brush to apply it. You can also use a roller, but for this small little box, I'll be using a brush. So I'll be putting one coat on this box, and then I'll be going back a second time, and there will be a total of two coats that go on any interior reptile enclosure. First coat is on there. I make sure I start with all the edges and corners. Those are the most important uh, pieces on the first coat. So now that the first coat is on there, wait three hours and I will be able to do the final second coat. All right, now move on to the next box. This box, we're going to be coating it with polyurethane that is water-based. So let's go ahead and coat this one. The first coat of the water-based polyurethane is on. It's just a nice clear finish. So I'll be going back to this one as well with a follow-up second coat. This one only requires two coats, although you can do three coats. So the recoat time on the water-based polyurethane is every two hours. All right, so we've had three hours of cure time. So it's time for the next coat. All right, now that it's all finished, we let them both cure. Uh, they both have that cure time. So for dry lock extreme and the regular dry lock, I let that cure for a minimum of five to seven days. That way all the uh, fumes and everything is 100% cured. That way you can be very confident. This is, this is not like noxious fumes, like I can smell it and it doesn't really smell like anything, but uh, better safe than sorry because it is going to be an enclosed, uh, an enclosed. And this one, uh, let cure for three days for this particular product and brand. So now we wait and I'll come back in three days and spray all of them down and uh, see what happens, see what happens huh? All right, it's been more than a few days and both of the water resistant coatings are fully cured. So that moves me on to the next important step, which is silicone caulking all the edges and corners. So I use a product from GE. I like to use the clear silicone caulk. This stuff is 100% waterproof. People use these on aquariums. It is definitely safe, it works fantastic. It is 100% silicone as well. It is ready for water in 30 minutes. So I like to use this opposed to uh, another brand I tried once and uh, let me tell you it was not worth it. It takes so long for it to set up and for a couple bucks more um, it's best to just do it right. And the other one wasn't 100% waterproof and 100% silicone and just not safe for reptiles. So this is the best option I have found and is uh, pretty inexpensive as, as well. So what I do with my, my caulking is I go in here and I caulk where the two pieces of wood meet at the edges and then around the corners so I go at least at least a few inches up in each corner also to make things easy I will be leaving a link in the description below for this silicone sealant that I use and uh, that way it'll make things a little, a little easier on your life so all right, link will be in the description. Just like that. I'm gonna go in there with my finger after, very light pressure. And make sure it's all flat and even pushed into 
the corner, right under the edge of the joint. So, I'll go ahead and I do a little bit on the corners as well going up. All right, now that the silicone caulking is on, I will give it a very minimum of two hours just to be sure. And, uh, all right, now I gotta do this one. I'll spare you from uh, seeing what that one looks like since you already know what it looks like. And then uh, I'll come back and we'll water test these things. Now that the silicone caulking has definitely had more than enough time to cure, I will be now misting all the three boxes down with just water. So I'll be putting a very liberal amount all over each box. This one has the dry lock extreme. This one has polyurethane. And this one has nothing, absolutely nothing. So this is more like gonna see what not to do. All right, let's get spraying. Everything seems to be resisting water pretty nicely, except for this one, of course. All right, so it's been about probably 15 minutes. So let's just go over to the worst one. Oh, let me move around the water. Oh, there's no more water in it. Did I dump it out? Nope. All of that water just absorbed right into the wood. So let's move on to polyurethane. This is the clear polyurethane. All the water is still in there. Nice and water resistant. And this one is a dry lock extreme. All the water is still in there. You can see all the water beading. All little water drip droplets just sticking on the sides of uh, both of these. Works good. This does not work so good. Well, now that we know that they hold water so well, I mean, I already knew, but it's best that I demonstrate it. I wanna be uh, a teacher, not a teller. So now it's time for me to get the water out. So I'll just probably just dump them out. And then uh, I'm going to try to put some dirt in there and then I'll show you how each of them is cleanable. All right, so I put some dirt in each one of them. So I'm going to go ahead and pretty much smear it in on each one. And then we can see how they all clean up. Time to clean them out. So what I like to clean my reptile enclosures with is 10 to 1 water bleach solution. So 10% will be bleach and the rest will be water. So very little bleach. So let me spray it all over. And I'll let it sit for a few minutes and then I'll wipe it all out. All of them are 100% cleaned out. We will start with the dry lock extreme. Everything cleaned out really well, except for if you see this tiny little brown scuff, hardly even noticeable. And then this one, this is the one with the, uh, the polyurethane sealer on top. That one worked very well, very simple. Left no residue, looks, uh, looks excellent. And of course the raw wood, I don't know why we're looking at that, but we know that uh, it's filled with water and uh, it has a little brown residue on there that's stuck. Who would have known? In conclusion, I mean, you can see that this one stains probably a little bit easier. Obviously this is a white, but you can get these in many different tints. So there's other possibilities of that not happening with uh, darker colors. And then this one is very simplistic, shows the raw wood and uh, is very easy to clean. And both of the sealants are very resistant to water. So it's pretty much a personal preference, but they both work great, it's up to you. All right, that's it. I hope this was very helpful to you. I tried to make everything very 
clear and comprehensible. And uh, if you need any of those products that I used in this video, there will be a link in the description below for Simplicity For You. And uh, yeah, like I said, I hope it was really helpful. I get this question uh, a lot and uh, yeah, I'm excited to see uh, if that answers all your questions. All right, if you liked the video, strike that like button. If you have any comments, post in the comment section below. Please do subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.